All right, so continuing our look at uh, energy and its related concepts, we're going to be looking at in this video uh, the interplay basically between energy, force, and power. So first we have to have a sort of formal definition for energy. And it's basically the ability to do work, and it can take many forms. Uh, there's the energy of motion. That was uh, the kinetic energy that we talked about in the last video. There's gravitational energy. Uh, there's sound energy, heat energy. Uh, electrical energy, etc. They go on and on. There's many different ways to store energy, and I'm sure you conceptually get uh, a few ways that energy is stored. Uh, on a quick note about energy, it can't be created or destroyed, but it can be converted. So, when a car smashes into a wall or whatever, you convert some of that from energy of motion into energy of sound, because you hear the tire screeching, the bang of the car, etc. All that uh, mo energy of motion from the car goes into some sound, uh, some heat, etc. Um, and then just for the sake of uh, sort of standardizing our units basically, energy is positive when it goes into a system and negative when it is pulled out of a system. And this goes for uh, energy, you know, that the system itself will uh, release or absorb, such as in a chemical reaction. Now, uh, moving on now to the relationship between energy and force, there are two main types of, uh, these are all forces. There's two main types of forces, basically. Uh, there's conservative forces and non-conservative forces. Now, conservative forces are forces that can take kinetic energy and then store it as potential energy, then re-release it as kinetic energy. So for example, if you slow down a car by stretching out a rubber band really thin, you can then release that energy by having the rubber band contract back to its original size. Oppositely, non-conservative forces are forces in which the kinetic energy goes to something that's really not recoverable. So for example, when that car hits the wall, it's hard to take all the heat and sound, etc., that went into, or that was released by that car upon impact, and make the car go again. So non-conservative forces uh, basically uh, lose, or not lose energy, because energy is always conserved, but what they do is make it so that the energy is no longer useful uh, for all intents and purposes. They make it not recoverable. And so conservative forces can do negative work because they can remove the energy from, you know, this car that was headed along this way or what have you, uh, and then store it as potential energy. And potential energy, potential, uh, we usually represent with the letter U. And because the definition of work is the change in kinetic energy, and because kinetic energy and potential energy must add up to be a constant, in other words, uh, all energy is conserved in one form or another, this means that work is the negative change in potential energy, which makes sense. As you increase the change in kinetic energy, you must decrease the amount of potential energy and vice versa. Now just as a quick note about conservative forces, which we'll be studying quite a bit, um, these are what are known as path independent forces. In other words, all that matters is that you go from point A to point B. It doesn't matter if you take a straight line, you zigzag, uh, you know, you come down and around, etc. All that matters is the uh, force, basically because you're covering the same force, let's say, coming this way, and the same net distance from A to B, then your work done, and therefore your change in energy, will be the same. So for example, if you uh, have a ball thrown up, you know, to here, by a person who threw it in some sort of arc, it's the exact same amount of gravitational energy as if that ball was bounced straight up off of a trampoline of some kind. In other words, the 
total gravitational energy is independent of how you got there, but rather just cares on which two points you started and ended with. Moving on now, we're going to be looking at uh, specific types of forces and their related energy, starting with gravity. So, if you're on the ground and you throw a ball up to some height, and we'll call where you threw it from y1 and up here y2, you have to realize that the work done on it is force times delta x, because we're only operating in this one dimension from the ground to the ball, and that force is mg, as we've discussed before. If you were to draw a free body diagram, the only force acting on it would be its weight, mg. And the change in x, or in this case the change in y, would be y2 minus y1. And so this force, mg, has been acting on it this whole way. So all you have to do is multiply this force, mg, by the total y2 minus y1, which we can abbreviate as its height. Basically the height is from uh, the origin up to the point where the ball is currently. So we get that uh, basically the gravitational energy, which we usually represent because it's uh, potential energy as u is mgh. Moving on now, we're going to be looking at uh, springs and what, are no, what is known as uh, Hooke's Law. So what you first have to realize is how forces work with springs. I'm sure you've all pulled on a spring or slinky before, and you'll notice that if you tug this way, there will be a force that resists your uh, tug going that way. And the force seems to get stronger as you pull it farther and farther away. And this uh, formula, which I'm going to write as F spring, applies to most elastic things. So the force of a spring, experimentally, you can determine this for yourselves, but I'm just going to write it uh, to make things easier for us, is negative K times X, where this K is what is known as the spring constant for that particular spring. And X is the displacement you know, x from its initial starting position. So to find the potential energy of a spring, all we have to do is integrate the uh, force with respect to distance. So we know that work equals force times, or we know that uh, the uh, infinitesimally small unit of work is force times small delta x. And all we have to do then is uh, substitute our new knowledge of what the spring force is. So we get negative kx dx, and then integrate. So we then know that the work done in pulling a spring out is negative kx squared over 2. This is what is known as a uh, Hooke's Law. Moving on now, we're going to be discussing the concept of mechanical energy. And this is basically a sum of all the energy within a system. So mechanical energy, usually represented by E sub mech, is the kinetic energy, oh, let me move that down, the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, U, of a system. And if everything has a conservative force, this means that uh, the change in mechanical energy will always be zero. In other words, you always have a recoverable uh, energy. For non-conservative forces, the change in the mechanical energy is given by the work done by the non-conservative force. Uh, basically, this is really easy to conceptualize. Um, the work done by friction pulling a block along translating into heat, he won't be able to recover, uh, will translate into the total energy lost by the system. So the last concept we're going to be covering in this video is power. Now power is defined as the rate at which work is done. So basically P power is work, uh, how much work is done per unit time. And because work can be related to energy, it's often writ at, written as uh, energy per unit time. And so, uh, just dimensionally, you can see that because power equals energy over time, uh, and our unit for energy is joules, our unit for time is seconds, that uh, power is in joules per second, which we sometimes write 
as a watt, represented by the capital letter W. And this is why sometimes your total energy consumption will be written in kilowatt hours, because a kilowatt is really just a unit of energy per uh, time, so joules per second, and then you multiply that back by a time to get this energy used uh, right in here. So that about does it for this video relating energy and power, as well as the types of different energy. In the next video we're going to be looking at uh, force, as well as how it relates to potential energy, as well as energy diagrams. So in that video we'll be covering a few new concepts. And that ought to conclude our uh, coverage of energy, work, and force, aside from some practice problems.